Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mahan Field, the home of Natick Post 107. You are tuned in to Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton, as well as WACA TV in Ashland. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Jack Marcy is our cameraman for this evening. And it is a beautiful night for Ashland Legion Baseball. Ashland Legion comes into this game with a three and one record. Natick Post 107 is two and zero oh on the year. A little bit of a late start here this evening due to a senior Ruth game that was taking place just before this Ashland Legion game. Let's take a look at the Post 77 lineup. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, starting things off. Tom Cavanaugh, the left fielder, batting second. Jackson Hornung, the shortstop, hitting third. Ronan Bates, the DH, hitting cleanup. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, hitting fifth. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, hitting sixth. Drew Rancatori, the catcher, hitting seventh. Ben Fink is the first baseman, hitting eighth. Cole Glassburn, the second baseman, hitting ninth. The windup and the pitch, it is low for ball one. A one and oh count. As I welcome in my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad. Larry, how about that Natick post-107 field? Wind up and the pitch. Strike one. Third base, Noah Jacob. Shortstop, Ben Forsberg. Peter Manoli at second base. Sam Forsberg at first, no relation to Peter Forsberg. In left, Colin Galani. Center, Max Ferrucci. In right, Jacob Greenberg. Carter Doran behind the plate, catching Sam Siegel. Sam Siegel set to deliver a one and two count to Ben Thomas. An 8.15 p.m. start here this evening for this game. So we're gonna play a little bit into the night here. But fortunately, it is the longest day of the year. On it the, is uh, the summer solstice, isn't it? First day of summer. Two and two count on Thomas. He's having a good year at the plate. Certainly is, as Siegel delivers that pitch down low, full count. Ben Thomas, a 500 batting average so far, seven for 14 on the Young Legion season. He's played in all of the first four games. He has scored five runs. 588 on base percentage as he follows that into the backstop. Siegel looks like he's got a little life on his fastball. We'll have to see his secondary stuff. Starting pitcher tonight for Ashland Legion is gonna be Shane Leary. He'll be making his first start of the season. As that pitch inside, Ben Thomas draws the walk. We'll see what Ben Thomas does on the base pass. He's Notorious for getting a nice greedy lead, and he's got a right-hander to work with. So it's easier to steal on a righty than a lefty. Wind up and the pitch, outside. Tom Cavanaugh playing left field today. Got a great start against Sudbury on Tuesday. Ended up going six innings, six shutout innings. Actually until the what happened? Until the uh, the one the error, I believe that was an unearned run, if I recall correctly. Against Sudbury, I'll have to go back and look. I, I believe it was a mercy game. Uh, yep, it was a mercy game, 13-1 final. Most outside. of our viewers were sleeping by the time that game got over. Three and O count. Sam Siegel having some trouble uh, getting it over the plate. That went up high. It was actually a 14 to one Mercy win for Ashland Legion on Tuesday. As Jackson Horning will step in the shortstop. We'll take you through the Legion standings in just a moment as we're gonna get a early visit to the mound here with Sam Siegel. And while we have that visit to the mound, let's take you through those standings. Natick post 107. Two wins, no losses. Lowell post 87, one win, no losses. Medford post 45, one win, no losses. 
Ashland post 77, three wins, one loss. Waltham post 156, one and two. Bill Ricca post 268, one and two. Sudbury post 191, one and two. North Chelmsford post 313, one and two. Hudson post 100, zero and one. Newton post 440, zero and one. As Siegel is set to deliver. This is up the middle, gloves at short, throw to second, 4-1, the throw to first is high, and into the fence it goes. And Jackson Horning will stay at first as a run comes around to score. It is 1-0 post 77. So have to give a throwing error on the second baseman, turning so, that. Certainly do. Jackson Horning reaches on the 6-4 fielder's choice. An error allows Ben Thomas to score. No, I'm thinking that they're going to send Horner first and third situation. Ronan Bates steps in. That is low. Siegel hasn't shown us his move yet. One and oh count. Stepped off the back of the rubber. No throw. Runner at first, taking a lead. As this is hit in the air, foul. Just over us. A one and one count on Ronan Bates. Looks like they're uh, grilling up some burgers over there, Larry. You might Ooh. be able to get your burger after all. Oh. Siegel. That's awesome. <laughs> Siegel working from the stretch. We already have warm-up action for Natick. This one's going to get by. Is Jackson Horning going to advance to second? A wild pitch allows Horning to advance. That was my bad there. I said the situation was first and third, and that was Jake Obed over there in their third base, but he's coaching. Line up and the pitch from Siegel. That is low. Three and one. Well, you wonder if uh, Natick just wanted to give Siegel a chance, see what he's got on the mound, and if he struggles, just pull him early on. They already got bullpen activity going. Yep, could be a long night if Siegel continues to struggle like this as that pitch is outside. Rona went to University of Mass Lowell this year, and his buddy, Jake Obed, went to University of Mass Amherst. Ah, of course, Jake Obed, one of the assistant coaches this season on post 77, as Lewis Rossi will step in, the third baseman. It is now first and second with one out, one already in. I think uh, Lewis sees something. That pitch is going to allow the runners to advance. Another wild pitch. Natick moving their uh, infield all the way in to cut off. A run at the plate, it's hit right at him. The pitch low. One no count on Rossi. He likes to go the other way. He's got a big hole between th sh third base and shortstop. One and one. Rossi didn't like that. Lewis Rossi at a 308 on the season. Up the middle, gloved by the, bobbled by the shortstop. Everybody's safe. Another run scores. Another fielding error for Natick. It's 2 0 post 77. Jackson Horning comes around. Once that ball hit the dirt, he was cooked. If he stayed on the grass, he might have had it. Second error of the inning for Natick. That'll bring up Brad Seymour. Now the runners are first and third. See what uh, Ashland does. That's fouled away. Well, this similar start to uh, what happened in the Sudbury game the other oh, night, Larry. please, no. <laughs> Line up and the pitch. Fouled into the backstop, 0-2. Rossi was off with that pitch. Had the hit and run on. I think those burgers are for the Natick uh, senior route, Tom, so. Ah, well maybe you could go over and steal one. Possibly. Sam, Sam Siegel graduated Natick High School this year. 
pitcher for post 107. Runners taking off from first, and there's a strike, an easy steal for the speedy Louis Rossi. So now runners on second and third. And Seymour did indeed strike out, so that's two away. I'll bring up Drew Rankatori. That pitch low, 1-0. Rankatori hit. 333 for the Hopkin and Hillers this year. Got a lot of action behind the plate. Certainly did with the absence of Steve Simo, says there's a strike. Counts one and one on Rankatori. Wind up in a pitch, inside, two and one. Due up next is Ben Fink. He's the first baseman today for post 77. That is in the dirt. Runner from third halfway down the base path. He's going to try to return. He's caught in a pickle. Here we go down the base path to throw home. And he's going to try to jump over the tag, but he is caught. And that is going to be the third out of the inning. But post 77 does get two on the scoreboard. It's 2-0 as we head to the bottom of the first on HCAM and WACA-TV. Heading to the bottom of the first, a 2-0 lead for post 77. Let's take a look at the Natick batting order. Number 10, Max Ferrucci batting first. Number 22, Colin Galani hitting second. Number 30, Will Haskell hitting third. Number 15, Noah Joseph hitting cleanup. Number 13, Jacob Greenberg hitting fifth. Number 19, Carter Doran hitting sixth. Number five, Sam Fosberg hitting seventh. Number one, Ben Fosberg hitting eighth. And number eight, Peter Minoli hitting ninth. Sam Siegel is the pitcher. Larry, how about that post-77 defense? We have Lewis Rossi at third. Jackson Horning in his familiar shortstop spot. Cole Glassburn at second base. Ben Fink at first base. Left to right, Dominic Cavanaugh, Brad Seymour, Ben Thomas, Drew Rancatori. Behind the plate. It is Drew Rancatori behind the plate as Will Haskell will step in, or excuse me, Max Ferrucci stepping in for Natick. Still getting used to these new score sheets, Larry. Yeah. I'll buy you a scorebook. <laughs> I won't mention the name of the place. That's against FCC rules. But. <laughs> As the first pitch is a ball, 1 and 0 oh on Ferrucci. Line up in the pitch. This is up the right side, picked up by the first baseman, a three unassisted ground out. One away, and that'll bring up Colin Galani, the left fielder. Lonnie set to step in and face Shane Leary for post 77. That pitch is low, 1 0. Shane played club ball this year, I think at UNH. And he hits the batter there. That bring, didn't tickle. Certainly didn't. That'll bring up Will Haskell. The hitter will have to. Uh, Shake that one off for a moment. I think the coach is going to check up on him. There was some uh, good speed, uh, some good velocity on that ball. So that could not have felt good. Little apology from Leary. No intent there. Club ball is a good gig, Tom. You're not going to make a Division One school but you want to walk on and play club ball, as they call it. Tom Onzi did that last year while he was out at the University of Michigan. The DH, Will Haskell, stepping in. That's certainly a good way to get some good experience. So one out, one on for Natick. 
Runner taking off from first. This is up the middle. The second baseman gets to it. The throw to first. He'll get the out. Two away. Galani advances to second. That was some nice leather by Cole Glassburn. He made several good plays against Sudbury on not easy routine balls. Now he went deep into the hole between first and second to get that. Picked it up, spun around, and fired a strike to Ben Fink. Four to three on the out as Noah Joseph steps in. That pitch down low. One and oh. Shane Larry making his first start of the season for post 77. That pitch inside. He is the sixth pitcher they've used this season. They were up five to one against Lowell, I think in the fifth inning and then the wheels came off the bus. As this is up the left side, glove by the third baseman, throw to first, not a problem, a good stretch by Ben Fink. Five to three on the out. We will head to the top of the second. It's two to nothing post 77 on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. Top of the second inning, a 2-0 lead for post 77. Drew Rancatori, Ben Fink, and Cole Glassburn do up. Rancatori will return to hit after that problem yeah, play yeah, there. After a uh, rough end to the top half of the first inning, in which Warning was caught trying to come home on an errant throw by the pitcher. As Siegel delivers, strike one. Rankatori can hit the ball a long way when he makes contact. He's got good size, about 6'1 or so. Line up in the pitch. That's in the dirt, one and one. So Sam Siegel still out there for Natick, but I'd imagine the leash is pretty short. They do have warm up action. Not a very large crowd down here tonight, Tom. Guess they didn't know we were coming. Yeah, well, it's not too bad. Good amount of fans on the other side as that one's fouled away. One and two. Some of the senior Ruth players sticking around to take in some Legion action. And eat burgers over there. Wind up in the pitch. Upstairs. That was very close. Siegel deals, and is in the dirt, full count. Good take by Rancatori. It's a very good take. I think it's good for post-77 uh, this season. They got two reliable catchers in Drew Rancatori and Sean Jewett. Line up and the pitch, swing strike, he'll go down, one away. In case of an emergency, they have Jackson Hornung, who was the starting catcher for Ashland High School all through the season, but he plays very very good shortstop, and that's where Coach Johnson wants him to stay. He trusts him. Ben Fink takes ball one. Ben Fink, the first baseman today. And there's a strike. He's had one plate appearance. That was in real, as a uh, substitution against Sudbury. Getting the start here today. With a whole lot of games coming up, Coach Johnson did mention he's going to use pretty much everybody on this roster at some point in a start. A two and one count on Fink. Glassburn waiting patiently on deck. Three and one. Catcher tried to frame that pitch, but the umpire wasn't buying it. Siegel set to deliver. And there's a strike that'll fill up the count. Ben Fink a was a junior this high school season. Only had one at bat for Holliston as he gets the walk. 
One at bat all year? One at bat all year. I'll bring up Cole Glasper in the second baseman. He's listed on the Ashland rod roster as a pitcher type. Pitcher slash something. He did play in four games. And is inside on Cole Glassburn. I was talking to Cole before the game. He's sort of known as the baby-faced assassin. And you're but, right. But ben Fink did uh, have three appearances on the mound, but only pitched seven and two-thirds. But I'm sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> well, that's all right. I was just going to make some trivial comment about uh, Cole not shaving for today's game. See, they got out of school, I don't know, a week or so ago. Forgot his fusion. His cat forgot to lick off the milk. <laughs> As this is up the middle, gloved by the pitcher, the flip to first, they'll get the out. It's one to three on the out. Fink advances to second. Two away, and that'll bring up Ben Thomas, the right fielder. He reached on an error. He tripled last year down here, if I'm not mistaken. Runner with a lead off of second, that pitch low, 1-0. Warm-up action has stopped for the moment for Natick. Sam Siegel appears to have maybe settled down a little bit. Down low, two and oh. Check in at second, runner back safely. Good throw up by Carter Doran, the catcher. He's got to get that ball down if he wants to make a play like that. Otherwise, it sails into the outfield. Line up and the pitch. Low. Three and O oh on Ben Thomas. Dominic Cavanaugh waiting patiently on deck. Siegel set to deliver. That is inside a four pitch walk. That'll bring up Dom Cavanaugh, the left fielder. So far at the plate this season, he's hitting a 267, four for 15. He has scored five runs. As he gets some words of wisdom from Coach Johnson as we have a conference here on the mound. Tom Cavanaugh went six innings in the 14-1 win Tuesday over Sudbury, giving up one run, three hits, struck out 11. Certainly a good talent to add to this year's post-77 team. He was a sophomore this year at Ashland High School. He had a 429 during the high school season. Had three doubles, 13 RBIs, and 22 runs scored. Gets a piece of this one, that's fouled away. That's windshield action over there. Yeah, it was pretty close. Certainly don't want to park along the street here at no. Mahan Field. I mean, we're in the danger zone, too, for sure. On overthrows and check swing foul balls, but I'll get in front of them for you. Yeah, I was going to use you as a shield. No worries. Wind up in the pitch. There's a strike, 0-2. Oh Looked like Cavanaugh wanted to pull the trigger on that pitch, but he just decided at the last second not to. Jackson Horning on deck. Both runners with a slight lead as that pitch is down low, one and two. Siegel working from the stretch. Takes a look at second and deals. Fouled away. Count remains one and two on the Ashland clocker. Post 77 had the double steal on. Go for Dom Cavanaugh throughout the next couple of seasons. 
just keeps getting better and better. Check swing, the ump saying he went. And that is going to be the third out of the top of the second. It is a 2-0 post-77 lead as we head to the bottom of the second on HCAM and WACA-TV. Heading to the bottom of the second inning. It is five, six, and seven due up for Natick. As Jacob Greenberg, the right fielder, is set to step in. Shane Larry set to deal. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. I remember Shane when he's a 9, 10, and 11 year old playing in the Tondorf tournament down in Medway. This is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop. The throw to first is there in time, no problem. Six to three for the out. That'll bring up Carter Doran, the catcher. He's a slick fielder, that Jackson Hornung. That ball tailed right into Ben Fink, just as it should have. Larry deals, that's fouled off. Oh and one. Warmock back activity for Natick. To your point, if Siegel gets into trouble. Oh and two. Off the backstop it goes. Yeah. Gonna have to face the three, four, and five hitters. Yeah, I think they want to be extra cautious. Try to keep that uh loss column at a zero. Very close pitch there. Certainly Very was. close. Perhaps a little bit low. One and two on the catcher. I smell breaking ball here. Leary delivers, and this is up the right side foul. The fastball. Line up and the pitch. Oof, I don't know about that one. That looked like a strike to me, Larry. Yeah. Guess we don't have the best angle here. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. This is hit in the air, a high fly ball. Is it catchable? Yes, it is. Ben Fink is able to range over and make the catch. Two away, and that'll bring up Sam Forsberg, the first baseman. I'm glad the wind wasn't a little more uh, than it is tonight. No, that was way, way up there. I could not see it. I lost it. I lost it, too. But we're not in the game, so we can do that. I was just worried about it uh, landing da down on us. It's okay. As this is up the middle, gloved by the second baseman, throw to first, and that will retire the side. Here in the bottom of the second, we'll head to the top of the third. Ashton leading 2 0 on WACA TV and H Camp. Top of the third inning, due up for Ashland post 77, is 3 4 and 5. Jackson Hornung, the shortstop. Ronan Bates, the DH. Louis Rossi, the third baseman. To face Sam Siegel out there for his third inning. Ah, oh, correction. We actually have a new pitcher. There's a strike. He's a little taller and a little bigger than Siegel. Strike two. So I guess... Uh, the leash with uh, Siegel was pretty short. Maybe uh, yeah, the native go. coach wanted to get Siegel and get, uh, get him some wings there. Good one, Larry. The new pitcher is John Warney. 
John Warney out there to take over pitching duties. I don't know why you would take Siegel out after he had a pretty good second inning. As the count is now one and two. Rarely see Jackson Horning get fooled by a breaking pitch. As this is up the left side, over the reach of the shortstop, a base hit for Hornung. He'll turn around and go halfway up towards second base and turn back. So a leadoff single for Hornung. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the DH. He's a third base coach's nightmare, Jackson. He'll run right through his stop sign. He's so aggressive on the bases. Bates steps in. Watch for Jackson to take off, pick over. Checking at first, runner slides back, safe. And oddly enough, both uh, post-77 runs were unearned. So I think it's even more of a mystery now as to why you take out the starter. As there is a strike on Bates. Bates hit uh, further down in the lineup last year. Jake Obed was the cleanup hitter. There's a strike. Down 0-2. To, the 0-2 pitch. That is going to be ball one. Oh, this pitcher just stepped off the back of the rubber just because Jackson was bothering him a little bit. Ronan Bates hitting a 167 so far in the young season. He, must got, he almost got sent back to the dugout on that pitch. Line up and the pitch runner taking off from first. That pitch was in the dirt to throw up. Not in time. Into center field it goes. Hornung's going to stay put. Is he a little shooken up there? A little slow yeah. to get up. Hopefully he's okay. And he's going to take some time and try to walk it off. Look like might have got hit in the knee with on the, the ball. Ankle maybe. I don't know if he got hit with the ball. It looked like knee area or uh, ankle area. Jackson Hornung for Ashland High School hit a 4.49 this season. 23 runs scored, 13 driven in, 11 doubles, three homers. He had a great year for the clockers. As Coach Johnson checks up on him, and he is okay. He's a gamer. I'd take him on my team any day. Absolutely. As a former Ashland clocker, Ronan Bates will step back in. Warney delivers down low. Full count. There's a little noise coming out of the post-77 dugout. Certainly is. They're pumped for this one. They'd love to put a zero in that Natick loss column. Line up and the pitch. Draws the walk. Two on, no outs. Now you got Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, stepping in. Good contact hitter especially the left side. So you see the alignment there. The shortstop is holding on Hornung in a big, giant, gaping hole for Lewis Rossi between third and short. Lewis Rossi graduated Holliston High School this season. Hit a 343 during the high school year as he takes ball one. If they only had the spray chart on Lewis Rossi. That'd be quite a big one. Nine runs scored, three driven in. Hit like 80 foot of area to play with over there. Right. One and one count on Rossi. He's never afraid to bunt either, so. Both runners with a slight lead. There's a strike. One and two. Warney delivers, and that is outside. 
Natick uh, dugout didn't like that call by the umpire. The 2 2. That's fouled away off the late post. My goodness, I, I want to get in the batter's box <laughs> with all that room over there. Where any delivers, low. Full count, entering the danger zone here for Natick. Two nothing lead for post 77, both runs were scored in the first inning. You get extra secondaries, they get a freeze on a line drive. Ooh, draws the walk. And there's the groans from the Natick dugout. That pitch was close. Uh, well, close close pitches were called the uh, half inning before. Wasn't it's groaning were. coming over the Ashland. I said it was close. I didn't say it was a strike. Brad Seymour will step in. He whiffed the last time up, which is really unusual for him. 1-0. Oh. Well, I must... Uh, you bummer for Natick. You take your starter out after two innings after he gives up no earned runs. Bring in another guy, and it's bases loaded, no outs after a couple of walks. Six straight balls now thrown by Warney. Uh, he doesn't want to groove one to Seymour. There's a strike. He didn't get cheated on that swing for sure. The 2 1 fouled into the backstop. 2 and 2. Brad hits with a slightly open stance. Gives him that extra tenth of a second to take a peek at what's coming. Here's the 2 and 2 outside. The walk here would drive in a run. Full count pitch. In the dirt, there's a walk and a run. Should be a manager visit, I reckon. Jackson Hornan comes around to score. Drew Rankatori, the catcher, will come up. And we will indeed get a chat from the native coach. Certainly an understandable chat after Warney has struggled pretty big with the last couple of hitters. I think you're right there. They should have uh, maybe left it in Siegel for another inning. Yeah, I, di I didn't understand it. I don't I don't know why uh, you take out your starter after he gave up no earned runs. Both runs really weren't his fault at all and seemed to settle down last inning. Well, let's see what Mr. Rancatori can do. 077 will take it, though, that's for sure. Wind up and the pitch, that's low. Head coach for Natick, Matt Lodi. Natick has so far defeated Waltham and Bill Ricca, swinging strike there. Come on, Drew, keep your head in there, bud. Doran behind the plate has very, been very, very busy. Infield is in all the way around for Natick. One and two count on Rankatori. I think Drew's trying just a little bit too hard. Down low. Good eye on that pitch. Three nothing lead now, four post 77. Three walks in the inning for Warney and Natick, but there's a strikeout, one away. They'll bring up Ben Fink, the first baseman. Holliston Jr. steps in. Well, be a, be a senior next year. There's a strike. And I think it'll be a big part of that Holliston Panthers baseball team as well. Absolutely. No question about it. 
Gets a piece of this one hit high in the air, right side. Is it catchable? No, it is foul. 0-2. No man's land. Three players converged on that ball. As aggressive as Jackson is on the bases, if either infielder had caught that, I think he would have tagged. Pitch is low. I think he would have as well. Ronan Bates at third, Lewis Rossi at second, Brad Seymour at first. Clasper waiting on deck. Swinging strike, got him. Two straight str strikeouts, two away. That'll bring up Cole Glassburn. Infielders retreat to their normal positions. Two out. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. Yo one fouled away. They seem to like that light post over there. Hmm. A magnet of sorts. Glassburn should start at shortstop for the Hopkins and Hillers next year. He plays his cards, right? Inside. One and two. Set to deliver. Gets a piece of this one up the left side and foul. That dropped in, his teammates would have erupted in the dugout. They certainly would have. Glassburn grounded out last inning. Inside, two and two. Did you steal my reading glasses? I don't think so. As this is hit in the air over to center, could be trouble, and that's going to drop past the reach of the shortstop. One run in. Here comes another. Hill slided safely, and the ball will go all the way to the backstop, allowing the lead runner to head over to third. Brad Seymour heads all the way to third. And that is a two RBI double for Cole Glassburn. And he gets off the schneid. He's no longer hitting zero. Two runs in. And that'll make it a nice 5 nothing lead for post 77 as Ben Thomas will step into the batter's box. And he's a threat for anything. And look at the hole between... Third and short away. again. Great piece of hitting by Cole Glassburn. That was just over the reach of Ben Fosberg, the shortstop. Gets a piece of this one. This is up the middle. This is going to be trouble. That'll get through. Here comes Brad Seymour and another run behind him. Glassburn, the slide in, not in time. They get him at the plate, but it is going to be a 6-0 post-77 lead as we head to the bottom of the third on HCAM and WACA-TV. Bottom of the third inning, 8-9 and 1 due up for Natick, as Ben Fosberg, the shortstop, will step in. Followed by Peter Minoli, the second baseman, and Max Ferrucci, the center fielder. That's fouled away. Shane Larry out there for another inning of work. Pretty good outing so far. That one's Ash low. Oh, didn't mean to step on you. Ashland plays tomorrow night, right? They do. The 1-1. One, one. Two and one. Busy couple of weeks for post 77 as that pitch just outside. Three and one. Last night, Natick defeated Bill Rick a four to nothing. 
Jake Jewett led the way on the mound, pitching all seven innings, allowing six hits, seven strikeouts, and two walks. That pitch in there for a strike, three and two. That pitching performance helped Natick get the shutout win over Bill Ricca. As this is hit in the air to center field and caught one away. Peter Manoli, the second baseman, will step in. Well, Larry came back from a 3 1 deficit. Last night, Ashland fell to Lowell 9-5 to in a road game. Ben Thomas had three hits, four post-77 in the losing effort. One and one count now on Manoli. Leary's just breezing along. That one outside, two and one on Manoli. Leary set to deliver. Outside. A 6 nothing lead for post 77. Two runs in the first, four more in the top of this third inning. Set to deliver. There's a strike, full count. We'll be back in action on the 27th. Wednesday against North, against Chelmsford. Yep, against North Chelmsford. First home game of the season as there is another strikeout for Shane Larry. Actually, that's his first strikeout of the night. Max Ferrucci will step in. But the way he, he's just sailing along, you would have figured he has more than one strikeout. A little sloppy. Uh play with the infield throwing the ball around. Coaches never like to see that. But it is Chelmsford. People up there, if you say Chelmsford, they know you're not from there. It's good to know. Another Larry Sacklad fun fact. As Shane Larry delivers. They got a couple of nice Chinese restaurants up there. The Hong Kong. The 1 0. Yeah. <laughs> 2 and 0 on the leadoff hitter, Max Ferrucci. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you Ashland Legion Baseball here from Mahan Field in Natick. 6 0 lead for post 77. Shane Leary deals. Check swing, I don't know. He did. He did. And they're going to say he held. Oh, strike one. 2 and 1. There's another strike, two and two. Larry's been able to induce the Natick team to hit the ball on the ground. Defense has played flawlessly. So whether he strikes them out or gets them out on fly balls and ground balls, no matter. There's the two, two. There it is, strike three, out number three. Two straight strikeouts for Shane Larry. And we will head to the top of the fourth. It's post 77, leading six to nothing on HCAM and WACA TV. <laughs> top of the fourth inning, two, three, and four do up for post 77. Dom Cavanaugh set to step in. Post 77 put up four runs on the top of the third. And they now lead six to nothing. Wind up and the pitch. There's a strike. John Werney in there for his second inning of work. The L1. Down low. One and one. Gets a piece of this one up the right side, but right to the first baseman. One away. Get gypped on that one. Bring up Jackson Horning, the shortstop. 
Yeah, Sam Fosberg was just placed perfectly. Is it Fosberg or Forsberg? Fosberg. Uh, my bad. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit high in the air, over to left field. Did he lose it in the light? No, he makes the catch. Nice job by Colin Galone. Looked like he lost it for a moment, but was able to regroup and make the catch two away. It did look like he lost it. I'll bring up Ronan Bates, the DH. You ever see an outfielder at nighttime shade their eyes with their glove, you know that they're in a little bit of trouble. Line up and the pitch. There's a strike. Where he's set to deliver. Up the left side, gloved by the third baseman, the throw to first in time. They go down one, two, three in the top of the fourth, but it is a six nothing post 77 lead on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the fourth inning, two, three, and four do up for Natick. Colin Galani, the left fielder, Will Haskell, the DH. No Joseph, the second baseman, to step in to face Shane Larry, who has just cruised through the first three innings of this game. And looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter here for Natick. That is inside, 1-0. Two ando. So the mercy rule is 10 runs after five innings. And if you're the home team, you get to hit last. You got it. I'm not trying to jinx things, but be nice. Certainly would. But we're far from that point yet. Three and O. Oh. It's Austin Twist, the hitter. In the game for Galani. You know, Galani had to make a catch last inning, and you wonder if he got shook up a little bit because he lost the ball briefly and maybe took a step in the wrong direction. Possible. The 3-1. This is hit in the air over to left field, and it is caught. What a catch in left field by Dom Cavanaugh. Picked it right off the ground. Tell you the truth, I don't know how the home plate umpire saw it, but. I thought it was a catch. And you know me, I have 50-50 vision. Well. As Will Haskell, the DH, will step in. I got 20-20 vision, I didn't think he. I thought he caught it right before, right. Right, right before right it hit the ground. the ground, yeah. Right near the ground. Over the reach of the second baseman. Cole Glasper, and that is going to be a one-out single for Haskell. That ball was scorched. Yeah. And Glasper almost had his glove was just a little bit too low. No, Joseph will step in. Shane Larry working from the stretch. He has not had to do that a whole lot in this game. Checks in on the runner. That was his dummy move, Tom. That was not a best move for sure. Can't be playing club ball with a move like that, but the runner is getting a nice lead. Larry deals. This is up the middle. Glove by the shortstop. Throw to second, 4-1. Throw to first, and in time. 6-4-3 they go. And that will wrap up the bottom of the fourth. We'll head to the top of the fifth. Post 77 leading 6 0 on WACA TV and HCAM. Top of the fifth inning, 5 6 and 7 do up for post 77. Lewis Rossi, Brad Seymour, Drew Rankatori. Strike one to Rossi. There's a nice bottom of the fourth for the post 77 defense. Ended on a 6 4 3 double play. That pitch inside, one and one. Yeah, Colt Glassburn really had to hang in there at second base to make the turn. 
throw the ball to first after he got it from Horning. And he was about to get taken out. And we'll have time called here. Late time by Rossi. Now uh, they have the third baseman playing in on the cut of the grass. 1-1 one, one is outside. Which has got Lewis some extra territory over there to work with. 2-1 pitch. There's a strike, 2-2. Two and two. Leg lift and the pitch. This is a good piece of hitting. That is going to take a hop off the lip of the grass into the outfield it goes. A leadoff single for Rossi. Brad Seymour will step in. Nice, nice hit by Lewis. If you're on the opposing team, he's a kid you love to hate. But if he's on your team, you love him. Absolutely. Max effort all the time. He's reached base in every at bat today. Reached on an arrow, a walk, and now a single. Checking at first, slides back safe. Brad Seymour, 0 for 1 with a walk. Did score run in the third. It's part of a four run inning for post 77. Good base stealers are always watching that pitcher's back leg. Warney deals in there for a strike. Pitcher moves that back leg. You know he's picking over. Once he lifts that front leg, just like that, you know he has to go to the plate or he'll balk. Good slide back by Rossi. The 0-1. This is up the right side. That'll get into right field. And it is going to be two runners on with no outs. Brad Seymour, nice hit going the other way. Drew Rancatori, the catcher, will step in. His teammates would like to see him get off the schneid. Wind up and the pitch outside. And he hits this one in the air over to left field. And that is going to drop just in front of the reach of the left fielder. Rossi is going to come around to score. And Seymour heading over to third. He's thrown out. Ranka Torrey reaches. I'm going to give him a hit on that one. Just oh, a tough absolutely. ball to play. Seymour thrown out. It is going to be one runner on with one out. Ranka Torrey at second. Lewis Rossi comes around to score. It's 7 0 post 77. You rarely see Seymour get thrown out on the bases. He's got really good speed. Ben Fink will step in. Sort of hesitated a little bit whether to take third or not. And then once he made that decision, he had to finish it off and get thrown out. Well, we know post 77, very aggressive on the base paths. They're not afraid to try to send guys. Oh, and one count on Fink. Warney delivers. Held his swing, 0 oh and 2. Oh, a suspect. IMO. It was close. Outside. Two up next, Cole Glassburn. Line up and the pitch. It's a piece of this one. It is in foul territory. It's it goes hit the car. just over us. And it just misses a car parked along the street. Thank God for guardrails. Wow. So two of the Hopkins and Hillers, Glassburn and Rancatori, have broken through tonight with their first hits of the season. One two pitch. It's a piece of this one. That's going to go foul. 
Goes just over us. Making some good contact here. Both his runner at second with the lead, and that hit him. That was a Stevie Simos hit by pitch. Yeah, he just kind of put that arm down and took it. That's the way to do it. Take it for the team. Cole Glassburn will step in. That was about a 35 mile an hour curveball he got hit with. Wow, that's exaggeration. Maybe it was a 55 mile an hour curveball. We're going to get a mound conference here. One out, seven to nothing. Yeah, it's been a rough outing for John Werney. You just wonder what the score would be if Sam Siegel was left in the game. Totally different attitude I've noticed this year with the uh, post-77 kids. Last year they were sort of ragtag, bad news bears type type guys. They got the job done, but seem to be a little bit more serious and focused this year. I think they're on a mission this year. They had a taste of success last season, making it into the state tournament. This year, they want to go to the distance. They want to get to that regional level. And with this amount of talent, they certainly have the potential. As that is fouled away. Where is the tournament this year? I want to make sure the food is good. Nothing I beats believe, Fino Field. I believe, I could be mistaken, but I believe it is in Brockton. Oh, my goodness gracious. That's fouled away, 0-2. Campanelli Stadium? I'm not sure. I'll have, I'll have to ask Coach Johnson again. But they're not thinking about that point yet. It's still a long no, way to go. No, no, but they want to get there. A lot of the returning players want to get there. The 0-2. Fouled away. I'd hate to play a doubleheader down in Brockton if you had an 11 o'clock game and a 7.30 game. Not much going on down there. Right. <laughs> you go to Jordan's, whoop, you go to the big furniture store in Avon. <laughs> Find a nice comfy couch. Glassburn steps back in. Runners on first and second. One out. That's fouled away. Seven nothing lead for post 77. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad, happy to bring you the fifth season of Ashton Legion Baseball on WACA TV and HCAM Television in Hopkinton. Hard to believe five years have gone by this quickly since this is my second year. <laughs> right. This is my fifth year, your second. That is inside. Nice take by Cole Glassburn. Warney working from the stretch, the one, two. Up the middle, and this is going to be glove by the shortstop. Flips the second for one, and that is all they will get. Two outs. Pushing up to third is Rankatori. Clasburn squared that one up nicely. Took a nice play by the shortstop. Could have taken it himself, I thought. So Glassburn reaches on the six to four fielder's choice, but now trouble coming to the plate for Natick. Ben Thomas set to step in. He has walked, singled, and reached on an error today. He has scored a run and driven in a run. A little conference between the infield umpire and the middle infielders. Now the native coach is coming out. I know what was, what was said there. Well, if you're a coach at this level, you tell your players to keep their mouths shut. Now, looks like we're going to get a little conference here between the umpire and the coach of Natick, Matt Lodi. Natick expected to be uh, one of the better teams in District 5 this season. They've started off with a couple of big wins over Waltham and Bill Ricca. Certainly have some talent on their roster. Oh. Sort of the creed for the American Legion baseball program is to have respect, respect fans, respect umpires, and they don't put up with much guff. 
I certainly don't as this conference will continue on here. Well, it didn't seem to get too uh, vocal. Now the umpire just got to raise his fingers and point to the bench, and that would be the night for the coach. Runners on first and third. Ben Thomas steps back in. Glassburn with good speed at first base. The lefty awaits the pitch. Runner taking off from first, the throw up, and there will be no throw up. Throws it back to the pitcher. An easy steal there for Glassburn. Smart move by the catcher, Carter Doran. He knows if he threw up, Rankatori was coming around to score. That pitch outside. Two and oh on Ben Thomas. Swing strike. Good pitch there from Warnley. Outside. I just wonder why he doesn't hit a little bit lower in the order. Three, four spot. Well, he has a 500 batting average and a 588 on base percentage, so why not? He does hit for power. And look at that, he draws another walk here. That's going to load up the bases with two outs. Dom Cavanaugh coming to the plate. He's 0 for 2 with a walk. He's overdue. Looks like we're going to have a pitching change here. So that will be the night for Warney. He goes two and two thirds, and we'll see the third Natick pitcher of the night coming into the game, and we'll get you updated on who that is when we return. It's post 77 leading Natick, seven to nothing on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. Thomas. Continuing on here in the top of the fifth inning, a new pitcher for Natick as Dom Cavanaugh steps in. Who is he? It is the third baseman, Noah Joseph, on the mound. Leg left and the pitch, swinging strike. He started at for, uh, third base, now moves over to take over on the mound for John Worley, third pitcher of the day for Natick. That's fouled away, 0-2. And over at third base. Wind up in the pitch, outside. Taking over at third base, it looks like there's Jake Jewett. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit in the air over to right center. That'll drop down. One run in. Here comes another run. The outfielder still tracking down the ball. And now maybe a third run's going to come in. The throw home is going to pull the catcher off the bag. Everyone's safe. And then the hitter going to try to advance the third. He's thrown out. That is, uh, that is something that a that, uh, post-77 runner would do, try to advance on the throw home. Three runs score on the great piece of hitting by Dom Cavanaugh and a three RBI double. And it is 10 to nothing as we head to the bottom of the fifth on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the fifth inning, five, six, and seven do up for Natick. Jacob. Greenberg, Carter Doran, and Sam Fosberg to face Shane Larry, who's just cruising right along. Another four runs were able to score, four post 77 in the top of the inning. Line up and the pitch. Outside, 1 0. The inning ended on a Three RBI double by Dom Cavanaugh after he tried to advance the third on the throw in. They are really greedy with their base running. They certainly are at, at times, they, but they got a big lead, so they felt comfortable trying to see if Nady could make another mistake. Two and one on Greenberg. Wind up and the pitch from Larry, that one's low. 
three and one. It's Greenberg's second at bat, he grounded out in the second inning. And his only other at bat. That one inside, he draws the walk. Just a little bit inside, the Red Sox beat the Minnesota Twins this afternoon, 92. Rick Porcello for the win. Mookie Betts had a home run. Certainly Something different, win. yes. Yep. Is that you'll be heading to Fenway on Tuesday? That's right, taking on the Angels. Bring your glove. Carter Doran, the catcher, steps in. Larry working from the stretch. He deals. That's going to get away from the catcher. And the runner's going to take off for a second on the wild pitch. That was an interesting pitch from Larry. I don't know if he was just trying to throw to the catcher to hope to get the runner stealing or if that was that an actual it slipped pitch. out of his hand. Yeah, I think it might have. Lead over at second, the 1-0 uh, outside. Nicely done by Rankatori, not letting that ball get away from him. Larry showing good composure out there on the mound. Gonna take a look back at the runner at second. Takes a look back and deals down low, three and zero. Oh. On Carter Doran, the catcher. Larry running into a bit of a jam here in the bottom of the fifth. Big lead over at second base as he deals a strike. You'll see some pitchers that will just get it and throw it, get it and throw it, get it and throw it. And they'll still not find the strike zone. 3-1. This is up the right side, past the reach of the second baseman. Here comes Greenberg. He's going to try to score the throw in. It's a good one, but it gets away from Ray Katori, And it's going to be a 10-1 ball game. Carter Doran advances to second on the throw in, an RBI single. Larry doing his job backing up home plate. Rankatori with his length was able to get that throw. That'll bring up Sam Fosberg, the first baseman. Line up and the pitch down low. Runner with a lead off of second, leg lift and the pitch. A little bit low, says the home plate umpire, two and oh. Nice job of framing by Rankatori, but he didn't get the didn't get the strike on that one. Larry deals. There's a strike, two and one. Runner on second, no outs for Natick. A run already in. But it's a 10 to 1 post 77 lead. I imagine the high school coaches for these kids tune into our telecast to see how their fledglings are doing. Of course they do. Up the middle, picked up by the shortstop to throw to first, no problem. Six to three for the out, and the runner at second stays put. That'll bring up Ben Fosberg, the shortstop. Larry deals, there's a strike. Larry's got a nice, easy, smooth motion. There's nothing herky-jerky about it. Well, for post 77, it's been good so far as this is hit up the left side, picked up by the third baseman. Throw to first, there's the second out. Now the throw over to third, cut off by the pitcher. I don't think he saw the runner trying to advance and he just kind of cut it off. Or he didn't think the throw was gonna make it. A five to three out. What happened there was Doran advances the third. Jackson Horning was covering the third base area and Rossi cut the ball off. I'll bring up Peter Minoli, the second baseman. That's real heads up play by Jackson Horning. 
uh, to abandon a base. Certainly is. So there's a strike two, Minoli. A little bit of life left in this Natick team. One and one. Well, it's been a busy week for post 77. This is their fourth day playing a game. Tomorrow will be their fifth. So certainly a busy week of action, but they have not used a whole lot of their pitching staff as the starters for the most part have lasted throughout the entire game. They have Pesson in there that can pitch. Much deeper pitching rotation this year for post 77. As Peter Minoli looks at strike three and out number three, it is 10 to one as we play on to the top of the sixth on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. Top of the sixth inning. 3, 4, and 5 do up for post 77. Jackson Horning will step in, followed by Ronan Bates and Lewis Rossi. Noah Joseph out there for his second inning of work. Pitched a third last inning, got the third out. As this is hit in the air, over to right center, and caught by Max Ferrucci, who ranges to his left to make the catch one away. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the designated hitter. Line up and the pitch outside, 1 0. Ronan was an excellent Little League player. Played in the Tondorf 9, 10, 11, and 12 tournament, Medway. Joseph deals. There's a strike. One and one. Leg left and the pitch. This is up the left side and through the third baseman. That's going to be a one out hit for Bates. He will stay put at first base. I bet you didn't know this, Tom, but Norman Bates was one of the best little league catchers I've ever seen. He was the only one that wanted to put on the equipment. Ah. They call them the tools of ignorance. <laughs> I'll bring up Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. Bit of a lead over at first for Bates. Yeah. Good call by Lewis Rossi. The clock in his head went off. Pitcher was holding on the ball too long. He's worried about Bates. Ooh, good pickoff move, but Bates back safely. And the pitcher threw over, but I think time was still called. So I don't think time was ever back in session when he did throw over. Ronan's got a very good lead over there at first base. Swinging strike. Pitcher went with a little bit of a slide step there to get that pitch to the plate quick. Catcher behind the plate has been able to get his throws down. That one outside, one and one. Pitcher still a little bit humped up about that. There's a bunt up the third base side, foul, one and two. Uh, the pest, Lewis Rossi. That must would not be pleasing the Natick crowd with bunting with 10-1 score. As this is fouled away. Well, the thing you'll realize about post-77 is they don't think about the score. They just think about scoring more. Well, it still is a little bit of a gentleman's game that might be considered Bush, but. Checking at first. Bates back safe. Joseph's got a pretty pretty darn good move over there. The one, two, fouled away. Post 
077 has played more games than anyone else in District 5. They're the only team that has played four games so far. As this is up the middle, Joseph gloves it, turns around, throws the second for one. Now the throw to first for two, and they get him. A 1-4-3 double play to wrap up the top of the six. To the bottom of the six we go. It's a 10-1 post-77 lead on WACA TV in Ashland and HCAM in Hopkinton. Bottom of the sixth inning, a 10 to one post 77 lead, top of the order for Natick. Shane Larry back out there to continue on. Max Ferrucci steps in. Light up and the pitch. There's a strike, or a ball, excuse me, one and oh. Look like a strike, I don't blame you. <laughs> that is true. Here's warm up action for Natick. There's ball two. Where? Oh, down the left field line. Oh, my goodness. Larry delivers. This is up the left side and off the glove of the third baseman. A rare mistake by Lewis Rossi. First error of the game for post 77. That will bring up Austin Twist, who took over in left field. Runner on first, no outs. Wind up and the pitch. Upstairs. His father Oliver is in attendance today. <laughs> the 1 0. There's a strike. Crack yourself up, don't you? <laughs> Shane Larry from the stretch. This is hit in the air, and is it catchable? Yes, it is, says Lewis Rossi. It'll make the catch one away. Yep, that'll bring up Will Haskell, the DH. Runner Max Ferrucci stays put at first base. Well, there won't be any mercy tonight. It's we're in the sixth inning. Uh, Natick has their last at bat. There's a strike on Haskell. Max Ferrucci with a slight lead over at first. Shane Larry deals down low, one and one. Larry's just got to work the hitter with a nine run lead. Doesn't have to worry about the run game. Post 77 holds on tonight. They'll improve to four and one. Natick would fall to two and one as this is hit high in the air. Left side, it is in foul territory. And no, it's it's foul, it looked like ball. it might have almost fell fair, but it did fall foul, one and two. Just overran the ball, Dominic Kavanaugh. Yeah, he almost had it too. He really had a range over to his right to try to make that play. Counts one and two on Haskell. Larry from the stretch. Looks at first and is set to deal. Leg lift and the pitch upstairs. Larry's still got plenty of zip on his fastball. Hasn't thrown a whole lot of breaking balls tonight. There's the 2-2. This is hit high in the air, and that is fouled away. That's a goner. Yeah, you're not getting that one. I think the raccoons are scrambling for that. <laughs> Two-two pitch. 
And this is up the middle, gloved by the shortstop, flipped to second for one, throw to first. And no, it's dropped by the first baseman, but they called him out. They called him out anyway. 6-4-3, double play, no take backs in this league. They may, t oh, they may overturn that. Oh, they're gonna bring him back out. They're gonna bring him back out. Coach Obed is giving them the razor. So Haskell reaches on the six to four fielder's choice. Leary's got a return to the mound. Fink pulled a fast one on the umpire. Had it he right almost had him. He, he almost had it. right at the tip of his glove and he just, ball just plopped right out of it. Noah Joseph, the second baseman, will step in. Haskell and Fink having a few chuckles over there at first base. Two outs in the inning. Leary looks over at first. Runner slides back safe. One of my favorite shows growing up was Leave it to Beaver. Leg left and the pitch. There's a strike. Just let it, I'd let you know. Good to know. The 0 1 pitch. Inside. There are nine teams in this zone. Check in, runner back safe. There is indeed. Play each other twice. A home and away. Wind up and the pitch. Oh my Down goodness. Low. Two and one. I was right at the knees. Ten teams in the zone. There's a strike, two and two. Took you through the standings earlier. We'll take you through them again. Natick two and zero, oh, Lowell one and zero, oh, Medford one and zero, oh. Ashland three and one heading into today's game. Waltham one and two, Ulrica one and two, Sudbury one and two, or Chelmsford one and two. Hudson and Newton, both 0 and 1. Is that pitch down low? 3 and 2. Well, you can't play yourself, so nine, nine teams equals 18 games. Line, line up and the pitch is hit in the air over to center field, and it's caught. What a catch by Brad Seymour. Comes to a dive, reels it in. That's the third out of the bottom of the sixth. To the top of the seventh we go. Post 77, leading Natick 10 to one on WACA TV in Ashland and H. Cam in Hopkinton. Top of the seventh inning, due up for post 77, six, seven, and eight. Brad Seymour set to step in, followed by Drew Rancatori and Ben Fink. A couple of defensive changes to tell you about for Natick. J.J. Hickson now at first base. Sam Fosberg, the pitcher, moved over to right field. And the new pitcher was the guy who started at right field, Jake Greenberg. 1-0 count on Brad Seymour. Fourth pitcher of the game for Natick. He trails 10-1 here in the final inning of play, more than likely. Natick would need... Quite a rally to hop back into this one. One one pitch. This is hit high in the air over us. And you lost one it. One and two. Did you lose it? I, I did. lost it. I lost it. I think it went over into the field behind us. Just barely got by that tree. We got some warm up activity in the Ashland bullpen. The one two upstairs. Well, so far, it's been an impressive uh, week of 
baseball for post 77. Line up and the pitch. This is their fourth road game of the week. And this week alone, they'll be three and one. If they're able to hang on here. Four and one overall if they get this win, which at this point is pretty much expected. No jinxing. That's right. Might see some pinch hitters coming up this inning. I think I see one on deck. And Seymour hits this one in the air. That is fouled away. Heads up, everybody. Into the road it goes. Count remains full. Looks like Owen Ward is uh, in the on deck circle to come in and hit for Drew Rankatori. Well, if that's the case, who's going to catch? It's Sean Jewett is. This is hit in the air, and that's fouled away. Good Sean bat. Jewett is over the, over the, uh, out of the country, we'll say, north of the border, Canada, that would be. I believe they could bring Rankatori back in the catch. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle, glove by the shortstop, throw to first, in time. Six to three for the out. First baseman almost stretched too soon, and the ball rode up on him. He was able to pull it down. That'll bring up Owen Ward. Could it be Jonathan Pesson warming up in the bullpen? It's a possibility. Wind up and the pitch. Inside, 1-0. Oh. Young man on the mound's got a little hump on his fastball. That one in there for a strike, one and one. Pitch to Ward. It's a piece of this one. It's in fair play over to the right side and caught by the second baseman, too. Well. And we will see Jonathan Pesson pinch hit. It's John Pesson pinch hitting for Ben Fink. Unless that's his brother Zach down in the bullpen. Can't be in two places at one, one time. It's John at the plate. Wind up in the pitch, upstairs. Here's the 1 0 from Greenberg. 2 and 0. Oh, Greenberg almost tripped up the mound. Fell in a gopher ditch there. Blazes it by him, 2 and 1. Have another pinch hitter on deck. Yeah, they're going to empty out the bench at this point. Or strike two. Two and two. And there is strike three. One, two, three, they go to the bottom of the seventh we go. It's post 77 leading Natick 10 to 1 on HCAM and WACA TV in Ashland. Bottom of the seventh inning, new pitcher for post 77. Cole Glassburn has moved over from second base to take over on the mound for Ashland. He's going to try to record the last three outs. And over at second base, we'll get you the uh, player in just a moment, hopefully. Shane Leary's taking over at first base. Jake Greenberg will step in. Shane Leary, the starting pitcher, remains in the game at first. And he had a great start, Larry. Six innings pitch, gave up two hits, one run, three strikeouts. Very solid start by Shane Leary. Real easy breezy game for him. One and oh count on the pinch hitter for Natick. He's a nice replacement for uh, 
last year's what I would consider co-MVP, Sean Babineau. Two and O oh count. There's a strike, two and one. It's Jake Jewett at the plate, pinch hitting. And he could be a very good hitter at times. He'll draw a walk here. He got the start last night for Natick, but he's getting the night off here today, but they brought him in to pinch hit. That'll bring up Carter Doran, the catcher. Cole can just work each hitter. Doesn't have to worry about anybody running on him. There's a strike. That one low, one and one. Teammate Drew Rankatori trying to help him out a bit. High school buds. The one, one. Two and one. Two one pitch, outside. Cole might be a little over anxious making his first appearance. One on, no outs. Three one pitch, fouled away. It'll fill up the count. Well, the crickets are out. Must be 10 o'clock. Fastburn delivers. There's strike three. One away. That'll bring up Sam Fosberg, the first baseman. Fosberg can have a relatively clean inning. That'll give Coach Johnson a, some confidence in him. So I'm dropped down to the side on that pitch, which he'll do. 1-0 pitch, down low. Class burn set to deal, fouled away. Two and one. Cole Glassburn had four appearances for the Hillers this past season. A 185 ERA, two wins, no losses. There's a strike. He went 11 and a third of an inning, giving up 14 hits, nine runs. Only three of those were earned, however, and he had 10 strikeouts. And there is another strike, and that's strike number three and out number two. Two straight strikeouts for Cole Glassburn, the Hopkinton Hiller, as Ben Fosberg will step in. Run at first has got a little greedy lead over there. And that's going to get by the catcher. Runner will advance. Yeah, Hopkinton in early part of the year gave up a whole bunch of unearned runs. The infield was like Swiss cheese until they finally settled, finally settled down. That's fouled away into the road. Ooh. The hitter is Hayden Scully, pinch hitting for Fosberg. Line up and the pitch. And then they're gonna call a balk here on uh, Glassburn. And the hitter knew it. The hitter just stood there and didn't move at all. He saw the balk. He might not have come to a set position. Coach Johnson is gonna come get a reasoning here. One and one is the count. Come on, coach. On Hayden Sully. Yeah, you're up 10 to one. I think you can lay off the argument a little bit. 
competitive nature of coaches. Well, coach Johnson certainly a very competitive coach. Does not like losing. Counts one and one. He's done a great job in his couple of years with this post 77 program as there's a swinging strike. Oh, Cole ran right back and gave that kid the gas pipe. The one two from Glassburn. Upstairs. Almost went head hunting there. He had a little shake before he threw that ball. That might have been uh, for his teammates on the bench. Now he goes sidearm inside. Yeah. Ashley and Pence say, well, come on, one more pitch, we go home. Wind up in the pitch. That's fouled away. Right up, Drew Rancatori's coconut. Hitter is staying alive. <coughs> really tight knit group in that Ashland dugout. They're really cheering Glassburn on. They'll erupt. Upstairs, and there's a walk. When he gets the final out. And they certainly are. Two on, two outs. This Greenberg? That'll bring in Peter Minoli oh, to the Manoli. plate. Look the same. Line up in the pitch, outside. Glassburn set to deal. There's a strike, one and one. I have to say that Shane Leary is the player of the game. There's strike two. Nice pitch by you Glassburn. Agree? Two hits. Yeah, I'd agree with you there. Yeah, Shane Leary uh, had a very good game. If you're picking an offensive player of the game, well, you could consider uh, Jackson Horning. Scored two runs, singled, because that one's fouled away. We just took a fan's head off over there. You can also uh, consider uh, Ronan Bates, who walked twice and singled and scored a run. And of course, there's always Ben Thomas, who walked a pair of times, singled, drove in a run, and scored a run after reaching on an error. As there is strike three, get some swinging. And that will do it. Cole Glassburn pitches the last inning pretty cleanly and gets the job done. Shane Leary, the winning pitcher, as he went six strong innings, giving up two hits and only one run, striking out three. Ashland, post 77, takes down Natick, post 107, by a final score of 10 to one. Ashland scores 10 runs on nine hits, commits one error. Natick scores one run on two hits, commits three errors as post 77 improves to four and one on the season. Natick falls to two and one. The final score for the final time. Ashland post 77 takes down Natick 10 to one. For my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, our cameramen this evening, Jack Marcy and Mackie Kotob, I'm Tom Nappy, and we thank you for watching Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM Television in Hopkinton or WACA-TV in Ashland. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody, and we'll talk to you again soon.